Huh. Yes, thank you. So thank you guys all for being available. I don't see I can tell you, but I have you for three hours. So you might as well just get relaxed. Get comfortable. <laughs> Bill, you might, Bill, you might as well get a crack and barrel uh, rocking chair. I got you for three hours, man. So, <laughs> I it. promise I'm going to try to keep this to about 10 minutes or so. So first and foremost, Thank you guys for all being available. I know you guys had a jam-packed media day last week, and I've been begging Tiaka to just get you for a few minutes. So thank you. You're like, yes. <laughs> Ask yes, the question. Yes, yes, yes. Ask the question. So, uh, you know, really without going right into the film, what I wanted to really ask you, Bill, and of course you, Alyssa, and of course Tunde, is what is up with the horror genre right now? Uh, how horror genre right now? Because everywhere I look, it just seems like horror is winning, right? Um, George, maybe it starts back with Jordan Peele in 2017. Ever since Get Out, we've kind of got away from the conjuring and the paranormal activity to good old fashioned scary movies. Smile is currently the number one film in the box office for two straight weeks, even knocking out Amsterdam. Uh, Chucky has his own series. Uh, we saw a Candyman uh, resurge last summer. There's so much about horror that is just winning, winning, winning. And we'll just go around the circle. I guess obviously starting with uh, Melissa. Sorry, we'll start with you. I know you want the question first, Bill. But Melissa, why is horror? <laughs> why is horror killing it right now? No pun intended. You know, I I I'm gonna speculate. Um, maybe it's the level of escapism that um, you get with um, with horror, and of course the shock value. You know, there's something about escaping and being, I, I, I spoke of this recently and saying it's kind of like uh, being on a roller coaster ride and you're like just kind of inching up, inching up, inching up, knowing that when you get to the top and go over the other side, it's going to be, ah, oh, you know what I mean? That right. the shock of how is it going to feel compared to all the other, you know, roller coasters and experiences. And I think there's just something about sitting somewhere, escaping and being taken on this journey of, I don't know what the hell is gonna happen. Am I gonna be peeing in my pants? You know, <laughs> jumping out of my seat, screaming, you know, I think it, you know, that has a lot to do with it. And then uh, for for the, um, the horror that's a bit more political, I mean, I think people are going to, uh, it's a way to not preach at people, but to introduce very important ideas, and it's all encompassing, right? So, um, those are that's what I speculate in terms of. I love it. I want to get you, Bill, but I got to get Tundi real quick. Tundi, what is it? And kind of to your point, uh, Miss Sellers, you know, you look at uh, I reference Jordan Peele, and I just think about his latest movie, I know, right? And I kind of want to relate this to bitch ass because there's there's so much messaging and really every. Jordan Peele film, but I, I see a lot of uh, symmetry in that. But to me, why in the world are, is the horror genre winning so much right now, in your opinion? I, th I just think that people have always been fascinated with thrill. You know, there, there's a reason why Halloween is like one of the most celebrated holidays, not just in the United States, but in the world period. So it's like people like the idea of like being frightened and just getting out of their comfort zone and something coming after them. And um, I think our film um, does a remarkable job. And I think that's the reason why the public really resonate with horror so far, you know? Oh, oh, you just hyped up Bill so much, right? Yo, Bill, he gave you like the immediate awesome intro right there. Please, man, <laughs> uh, from your eyes to the masses, why in the world is the genre and bitch ass going to continue the momentum of horror just being amazing right now? I think, well, I, I think what's great is horror to me is the only genre that um the that the horror is the star and i think that par part of the reason that we um you know with all these box office and all this stuff the idea that like smile doesn't need to have christian bale in it <laughs> you know directed by david o russell to 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 shine because it is it is like to me the great equalizer that when you come up with a concept a killer uh, uh, a, a plot or a scare that is so intriguing and so interesting that you can get people to forego tentpole names that they already know. Um, I think that's what's always made horror special. It is literally the great equalizer when you are a low budget or a first time filmmaker. People will come watch this because they're not reliant on the names or household names that they already know. So I, I think that has a lot to do with, with why horror is important. And um, to take that even a step farther, 
Um, horror, I think, is also a, a genre that everybody relates to because I think horror has always been on or has has always been on the pulse of society, right? And you know, obviously, Get Out is something that that uh, likens to that as well. But like, one of the things that I always think that horror is allowed is you get to see people in society who are underdogs win. You get to see women take charge. You get to see people of color take charge. Any anyone who is an underdog, you get to see nerds, people who have been bullied, people who have been this. So to me, it is one of the most relatable genres and always has been. And yeah, I think it is uh, something where uh, the genre is more important than who's in front of the camera. Absolutely. Oh, man. Thank you guys so much for that, for that feedback. And Melissa, just kind of going right back to you. What drew you to this uh, opportunity? Obviously, you know, looking at your credits, you have affiliation with the horror genre with Split. But, you know, just in general, this particular script, having the chance to, you know, help Bill get the story out to the masses, what really drew you the most uh, to wanting to be a part of this journey? Uh, Marcia, the character of Marcia and her relationship with her son and her um, need to protect him and at all costs. Um, it, you know, it's a, it's a, oh, sorry about that. It's a story that I know. And, um, and, and I wanted, to, I wanted to feel the shoes. I wanted to breathe life into uh, an African-American woman who had that. And I know it sounds strange speaking about a horror film to say that, but it's, you know, it, 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 I think it's part of the pulse of the film is, is their relationship and how important they are to each other. Um, but also, uh, I just fell in love with the script. And I've said before, once I, I was invited uh, to the callback, um, I fell in love with Bill and Jonathan. And, um, and I just heavily respected and valued what they, what they intended to do with this. I, I, I felt like I had a bit of foresight, you know, that um, it would be good and that I would be in good hands. And so that, that was, and then um, I just, some of the stuff I got to do in the film, you know, I was like, oh my God, yes, give it to me. I wanted it, you know, I wanted it so bad. So yeah, was, yeah, those are all the things that drew me to it. Actually, Anne, I'll just throw it right back to you, uh, Tunde. Uh, you know, obviously playing the, the humongous role of bitch at Cecil's character, right? Uh, nerve wracking. And actually, you know, now that I think about it, you, you're affiliated with the Black Panther franchise, of course. Uh, Melissa, you with uh, split a couple powerhouses to, to bring your talent to, to this amazing, exciting project. Uh, like I said, uh, what really drew you to it? And uh, did you feel any pressure to uh, live up to Bill's vision? Man, I mean, the idea of the first Black boogeyman. I mean, first of all, that was a win for me already. Um, also, like the character, you know, so I could relate to the character. You know, it's the story of an underdog. It's the story of uh, this kid that was picked on a lot and it was bullied. And, you know, I felt like I can relate to it. I can identify with it. You know, coming from uh, a different country, you know, I went through like similar situations. Not like I got bullied physically, but like just teased, you know, for being different. And um, I'm just the biggest fan of Bill Posley, man. Um, not only Bill Posley is an amazing director and writer, but he's also uh, a stand-up comedian. So I met Bill in one of his um, stand-up comics, and um, I was like, oh my goodness, this guy is amazing. He has a vision, and if I, have a, if I ever have the opportunity to work with Bill, um, I, I will do it. And um, I read the script, and it just took me on this incredible roller coaster, man. I was like, oh my goodness, Sisu. I'm always room for the underdog, man. I'm always room for the underdog. And um, I was like, absolutely, I have to be a part of this. I have to be a part of this. Absolutely, Bill. I think they're basically saying we need a sequel. I, I think that you got two cast members that are saying, you were ready for that sequel, man, especially with uh, how the film ended. But definitely talking about, of course, these two amazing actors, but you know, adding uh, the, the legendary Candyman himself uh, to, to kind of get that mood started. Of course, everyone who knows Snowfall, we all know who plays the character of Spade. Uh, you, you brought in some some talent that we recognize and then some amazing uh, folks that we're just like, oh, wow, this person can act. This person has killed their scene. Talk about the casting aspect of, of putting all these talents together. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I think I was just blessed, you know, um, 
to be able to do that. And, you know, um, it was such an incredible process. Going through the casting process was also like really, really hard. But our casting director, Sherry Henderson, she was in, she was amazing um, getting these people together. I didn't think we were going to be able to do it. But, you know, it was the height of COVID. There was no vaccine. So all casting had to be done over over Zoom or online. Um, so that was really, really new and tough for everybody, I'm sure. And then, um, you know, it was it was hard. I mean, it was hard to pick between so many talented um uh, performers. I mean, everybody brought their A game and we were racking our heads to, to, to decide who, who we were going to choose. And then, you know, just because you pick people you like, doesn't mean that they're going to show up and deliver. And, um, I individually got a chance to call and talk with each person prior to them coming to, to, to set. And I was like, Hey, here's the truth. Um, we have 11, we have at the time we have 11 days um to shoot an entire feature film there's not going to be time for you to rehearse there's not going to be time for you to warm up there's not going to be time for you to to uh you know tr try it a different way you have to make a choice and we're going to go with it and i'm going to direct you to make sure that it is all consistent but i really 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 need you to be prepared and not just for me if you want your performance to look good you need to be prepared um and so everyone accepted that call and showed up. There wasn't one person who was late. There wasn't one person who didn't know their lines. There wasn't one person who was difficult or had an ego. Everyone showed up to do the work with a great attitude. And I couldn't have asked for a better cast or a crew for, the, for that matter. I mean, the crew and the cast had a, had a symbiotic relationship. Everybody worked well together. It was, it was, it's the only way we could have gotten it done in that short amount of time. So I'll pretty much wrap it up with kind of one final question for each of you. Uh, Melissa, kind of going back to you, just with this full experience, as Bill just said, under those circumstances, not even a vaccine at the time, super nerve wracking. Just talk about just the overall experience. And of course, you've worked on other projects, but what is it going to be uh, one or two things that you really take away from being a part of uh, the bitch ass franchise, so to speak? Listen, this is one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had. And I've said uh, before, if every project could be like this, oh my gosh. And it's uh, in, in the things that I've done since uh, Bitch Ass, I, you know, I look for that uh, in people, but it also taught me how to not, not that I was uh, really a leader, but how to, how to play your part in making an experience a smooth and enjoyable one. I'd like to think just naturally I'm open and all these different things, but it's there's an there's an art to it and a craft to it, and you and you and you and you have to learn how to get and make the best of a situation and get the most out of every one. I'm sure you know Bill could speak to that even more, but man, and I felt like everyone had that attitude on the set. Immediately we gelled, like he said, it, it, it was just this magnificent glue, and it was a joy to show up every single day. It was such a thrill. I, I, I feel honored that they really had me uh, along for the journey. Guys, uh, same question to you, Cindy. Uh, aside from mastering your, your board playing skills, what's the one big takeaway that, that uh, you're going with uh, bitch ass in the books? I mean, like Melissa just mentioned, I mean, like you can, you can feel the level of passion in every single person, the cast, the crew. Um, I, I mean, I've been on incredible productions, very expensive productions, uh, numerous productions, um, but you can see the passion, honestly. Not not to say like other productions don't have passion behind it, but you can just see how the camaraderie between, you know, Bill, John, Shane, you know, Erica, you know, our production design, Jeffrey, you know, you can, you can, you can see how people are just like rooting for this character, rooting for it to, to be successful. And it, it's very palpable, you can feel it. You know, as an, as an, and then of course, ending with you, Bill, uh, can you exhale a little bit, man, uh, this big directing credit to your name or do you feel like you're ready for the next big project or are you going back in front of the camera? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I am, I'll exhale on the 14th when it's out. Uh, <laughs> that way I, then I can't do anything else to it or have to worry anything else out about it. It, it, now has to, uh, it now has a life of its own and gets to grow up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I'm excited for the for the next thing. And, and I think it showed uh, me 
um, that uh, you don't have to wait for people to tell you it's okay to go make something. You can just go make something. And I think that, you know, that is, I think maybe the biggest lesson that I learned from this and that like, if you're willing to, if you're willing to, to fail and, and, and put yourself out there, um, you're going to learn a lot and, and good things can happen. And I think that is the case for this film. Um, and believe me, it's not lost on me that most, most of the, they we're very lucky. Like we are blessed and we're very lucky. A lot of times movies like this get made and, and don't find a home and don't find an audience right. and, and right. do not find their place in the world. So we are, I'm so happy that this did. Um, and so, um, after this, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to like get back in there and, and, and make something else and just keep creating. October 14th, October 14th, October 14th. Thank you guys so much. I will disappear now. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you guys.